Wonderful to see so many dear friends of music, arts and ideas. First of all, welcome, welcome to Tallinn. Back in time and thousands of miles away, southwest of Tennessee in Memphis, 50 years ago this week, this was where Martin Luther King Jr. held his last and one of the most powerful speeches. There was a huge thunderstorm outside when he took the stage that night, amid the black garbage worker strike over unjust working conditions. It was there when he said what is now the first right-hand quote on his monument, right up where you see it immediately, on the mall in Washington. The one which reminds us that the choice for the mankind was and still is, not between violence and nonviolence, but between nonviolence and non existence. Next day, he was assassinated on the balcony of a motel, his last words being once said to a musician whom he asked to play a gospel hymn in the meeting later that night. His last words were, played real pretty. We all know Memphis as the birthplace of rock and roll and soul, both important not only as music styles, but as agents of change. For us, who we can eat our lunch wherever we want to, it may be difficult to imagine all the dehumanizing intimidation that people then faced. It's not so long ago. All these separate drinking fountains, entrances to the movie theaters or zoos where black people were allowed to go only when they cleaned the cages. And just think what an effort and therefore how much more impressive it was to respond to all of this with just love. Because expressing love, the happiness of love, hope for love and faith in love this is what soul music focused on. Those who preached nonviolent paths to justice spoke of the importance of touching people's hearts. Lack of love creates ignorance. Ignorance shuts out eyes and ears to the possibilities of creating positive change. Let's now come back to Tallinn. Here in Tallinn, we obviously have our own experience with the power of music. After all, our own movement for regaining the independence 30 years ago is known as Singing Revolution. I am really proud of Tallinn Music Week taking place for the 10th time. It is named as one of Europe's top city festivals by The Guardian last week. Helen, you can be really proud. I am proud. I'm so proud to see how this festival has developed into a creative hub, combining the freshest thinking in music, economy, the future of our cities, and facing environmental challenges. This year's event will focus on how we can meet the sustainable development goals. At the turn of the century, international organizations put out a short list of um, millennium goals. There were only a few they could be printed more or less on a paper as big as train ticket. I found a copy of them on my chair entering the room of IMF annual meeting, I think it was 1999. Some of these goals were fulfilled, but not by the doings of international organizations, not by aid. They were fulfilled simply because world leaders focused on growth and freedom of trade. This lifted living standards globally. Not, of course, to the levels most of us here enjoy, but at least to the levels that lessened importantly starvation and other suffering, mostly in Asian countries, China, India. This growth has not always given people more equal rights, though. Not all of those who now are not starving can freely speak out or be free or class-based ethnic or religious discrimination. These things, they take policy. 
economic policy is not enough. And here we have not yet been strong enough. Yet, people themselves, especially now when they are better nourished, they are moving up on the Maslow pyramid. People are not giving up. They, they are constantly questioning the right of ones to oppress others. It leads to tragedies. It leads to death. Yet humankind is not giving up on humanity. And Martin Luther King was right. There can never be safety for mankind anywhere unless there is justice everywhere. Last year, war raged on in Syria. Rohingyas were killed and driven out of their homes. And as always, Africa has been left behind quite a bit. You know, we never treasure what we have plentiful. Here in Estonia, for example, clean, drinkable water is not at all treated as it deserves. It is very often wasted because there is a lot of it. When I was in Africa, I felt that young people there, they are treated as we treat water because there are so many, they do not get the love they deserve from the society. There is exploitation, lack of schooling, child trafficking, death. But you know, if we look at the world, the wild world, the big world, with love, we shall overcome. Please spend this conference looking at the world with love. Let us appreciate what we have, the beauty of human beings, the beauty of nature, the beauty of similarities, and the beauty of differences as well, and the beauty of different opinion. And then let's treat what is threatening everything beautiful just with the power of our love, for that what is truly beautiful. Let's do it. Let's clean up the world. Let us use technology to help Africa to overcome its deep-rooted problems and leapfrog into the future. Let's use technology to grow our economies without ruining our nature. That was so 20th century to get rich on the expense of our environment. Let us be green and eat clean, but please, without wasting resources that can feed much more people with responsible application of science and technology. Let us respect each other, but without demanding that other people give up their cultural space for the newcomers to feel properly respected. Let us also remember that when moving globally, we are always not just moving out of our own home, our own culture, but always also into someone else's home, their cultural space. Let us respect cultural and religious differences, but be adamant about repressive habits belonging to the past. After all, all holy texts can be read as the message of love, not the message of violence. Let us give people safe communication in the cybersphere by giving honest people globally the possibilities to identify themselves to each other and create protected data exchange for those who can trust each other online. Digital signatures should be human right, not the privilege of Estonians, Luxembourgish and a few others. They are just a drop in the ocean. If we do this, someone can one day tick all the boxes in SDG list as well, for sustainable development goals are lengthy and hard to memorize, unlike millennium goals were. But finally, it doesn't matter. Just do not read those papers. Do not speak that bureaucratic language. Just listen to your heart and act with love, and that would do. It will all translate into a better world. And that is what matters. Remember, play, play it really pretty. Play it real pretty, please. <laughs>